My name is Tessa Asquith-Lamb and I'm an artist. I work for the City Arts Centre and other venues delivering workshops and described tours for the visually impaired. In my second video today I'm going to show you a Celtic inspired interlace pattern that you might like to try. This is inspired by John Duncan's Tristan and Isolde which is full of beautiful details. So to begin with you might want to draw a grid to start planning your interlace. Interlace can be enormously complicated but this is a simple sort of plaited design that you might like to try to start with. You could think of it almost like ribbons that snake around each other. So I've drawn out a grid of dots here. The distance between these two dots is four centimetres and then the distance this way is 3.5 centimetres. But you could just do whatever you like really. This is just my first go. So I've put a dot like this along my grid and they'll just help me know when the curved line has got to start curving back again. And if you use different coloured pencils when you're planning your design, that'll help you think of them as individual ribbons. And try and sort of use your hand to make a flowing, wavy, curved line. And use those grids that you've made to help that curve fit a certain pattern, fit a kind of rhythmic pattern. So I've got my red line curving like this, and I've got my green line, which is going opposite to it. And the dots are just helping me space those curves. And then finally, because it's a kind of plait, I've got my blue line, which curves this way. So it's making a lovely plaited pattern. I'll just show you that. So once you've sketched those out, if you take a marker pen that's got a nice broad nib like this, this will really help you find that ribbony pattern. And in interlace you sometimes leave a little space where those lines are crossing over each other. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to think of these as one ribbon at a time. I'm going to curve this ribbon around, leave a space, start it again, curve it to there, leave a space, bring it that way, leave a space, and this way. So I've got my first curvy line like this. And then I'm going to go in the opposite direction with this, what was my green line. I'm going to go this, leave a space, curve it round, leave a space, curve it round, leave a space, this. And then finally, my red line. So I'm going to go like this. There we go. So I've got my interlace pattern like this. And this is just a practice one. You'll have to practice a few times before you get the right kind of rhythm going through these. But you'll find you'll get quicker at working them out. Then what you could do is get some nice coloured paper and try doing those same patterns on this coloured paper. And that will really give it that richness that's in the John Duncan. This is lovely sort of golden orangey red paper. I've just done with a marker pen and that would make a nice little cart to send to somebody. If you want to make something a little bit long, more long lasting you could have a go at making a stencil. Because you've left these little gaps in your pattern it'll work as a stencil so if you cut one of those out carefully and then you take a piece of paper like this and lay that down and I've got my stencil to lay on top. You might want to put some masking tape at either end just so it doesn't move while you're doing this stage. And I've got here some paint and a little sponge. Now you could use gouache or acrylic or whatever you've got. And I've got gold paint which will help me give that richness that is in the John Duncan. So I'm going to dab my paint through the stencil. This. And the best bit about stenciling of course is when you do the reveal. You flip it like this and I've got my beautiful interlace pattern. And then if I get a little piece of folded card and add that on there, I've got a card to send to someone I love. So hopefully there's something there you'd like to try working on at home. A Celtic inspired interlace pattern reminiscent of John Duncan's Tristan and Isolde. <laughs>